I was a little kid uh, in elementary school. I, was, I looked different than everybody else. I mean, I went to school in a 98.8% all black area. And here I am, my skin's as dark as theirs, but I got this wavy, curly little hair. And people be looking at me, girls going, you got a nice pretty hair, tell them, don't touch me, I ain't your dog, you don't pet me. Guys used to mess with me all the time, try to take my money, and I, I refuse to let you have anything of mine. I wouldn't give you nothing. Um, you tell me to give you something, no. I tell you right quick, this ain't give me Ohio, this Cleveland, Ohio. And we go to war. I fought every day. And people think I'm joking when I say it, but I fought every day from the time I was, I'd say, fifth grade until I got to be a freshman in high school. Growing up with him, um, I was competitive, and my brother was always a fighter, I'll say that. He's always been aggressive, and not towards everyone. I mean, I just think he's setting his ways, and he's like, well, you know, you're not gonna pick on me, and I wouldn't take anything from him. I mean, he was always that way. He's always saying, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna do this, but I used to run all the time. And we had the, the older home and had that big back door. So if I make it up the stairs and I grab that door, I could slam that door on him. See, he couldn't stop that door because that door was heavy. And I make it to the bathroom. They used to have a pillow and a blanket in the tub for me because they knew I'd probably end up in the bathroom. And I locked the door because he couldn't break the door. See, remember he said, don't break anything. So he couldn't really break anything. He couldn't put his foot through the door. So I knew that was my best friend. So it was, it was challenging growing up with him. I'd fight, run, and the first one catch up, me and him would go to fighting again. I'd stop there and start fighting in front of the church across the street from my house. And that's when he started calling me the holy fighter because I didn't care. I was not going to let anybody take advantage of me. I was not going to let anybody bully me. I was one of those kids that would tell you what was on my mind because my dad had raised us to say what's on your mind and do what you say you're going to do. When you ask me a question, you got a straightforward answer. It may not have been the nicest one, may not have been pretty, but it was a straightforward answer. You knew where I stood. But I told him, I says, uh, if you want to play football, I says, I'm with you. That's what you want to do. He said, Dad, I want to play football. I think, I think as far as motivating, he gave us the, the drive and the determination to play. My mom was more or less, she was the discipline, and she made us tough. Uh, sounds odd, but my father's always the one that told us, you got to dream. Dream about what you want to do, and you'll make, you'll make it successful. And no matter what someone tells you, push towards your dream. But that's, you know, that was my, that was the guy I followed. That's the guy I always wanted to do the same things he did. Thurl's playing football, I want to play football. I think he's always been, I hate to say an overachiever. I mean, even in high school, I think he played four games his junior year in high school and three games his senior year because he broke his hand one year and then he broke his ankle running and they thought they were going to have a good team in high school, he broke his ankle. Tally actually played only three high school football games his senior year. But he had 56 tackles in three games. Gary Stevens showed up. He came to see uh, Valley Forge at the time. May have, yeah, it may have been Valley Forge. He came to see them play because they had a couple guys that they were going to get to go to D1 schools. And I had made a bet with my buddies that I could make dream team player. They were all looking at me laughing, you know, okay, that's the the player of the week. So I was, okay, fine. Bet's on. I go out, I make every tackle in the game but two, and afterwards the coaches came over and said, son, where have you been all year? I said, I've been hurt. You've been hurt? Yeah, what was wrong with you? I had a broke ankle. You running like that on a broke ankle? I said, yeah. Well, back then I could, I could get up and fly. That's how I got recruited to West Virginia. Gary Stevens was there to see somebody else and see me. I had Syracuse, Iowa, and Iowa State. I looked at it and I went, Iowa, Iowa State? Mm, a little too far away from home. Syracuse was a nice trip. I almost went to Syracuse. Um, but then I said, mm, I came here and I fell in love with WVU because there were a lot of guys from the Cleveland area here already and there was a bunch of guys coming to school here that were from my area. So I said, okay, I'll go to WVU. When he told me he was going to West Virginia, I said, well, where is that? 
But he learned an awful lot in down in West Virginia. You know, he learned how to deal with people. If we had guys that wanted to be good, but didn't know how to be good, we would go out and we would play hard. And we would get beat on stupid mistakes. We beat ourselves. And as soon as we figured out that if we don't beat ourselves, they can't beat us. And as long as we take the fight to them and don't wait on them to bring the fight to us, we can win. Tally actually had a projector in his dorm room because <laughs> he watched extra game film. And he, we hated to lose, especially back then we major independent, we played Pitt, Penn State. And it just, it just killed us because some of those guys actually was in the area from Ohio and everything with the pit, a couple of guys and everything. So, you know, we would see those guys and they'll shake their head and laugh and everything. And, and uh, we just, it just tears up. Well, when I got here, Daryl Talley was about 175 pounds, six foot two, raw football player, really rough around the edges. But the one thing that Daryl could do is he could run and he would strike you. And Daryl Talley had that natural, God-given striking ability. When he hit you, he flat out hit you. They brought Coach Nealon in, and he looked at us, and he was, guys had their feet up on the chairs and everything. So get your feet off the chairs. Hey, you, feet off the chairs. So I'm looking at this guy, I'm going, okay, now what do we got here? I'm looking at him, he says, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys something. One part of his speech, he said, all you guys are my guys right now. I didn't recruit you, but you're my guys. I'm looking at him going, wait a minute. I'm going to the Cleveland going, you gonna tell me I'm your guy? You didn't recruit me? What the heck is wrong with you? I ain't believing anything you got to say, buddy. And then over time, you've seen that he honestly and truly cared and he was trying to get us to get better. And then you start going, okay, this guy's got what we need to do. He's got an idea, he's got a plan. Before that game, I went in, I talked to Coach Signetti, and he told me he's gonna redshirt me. 